Hi, welcome to video number four of the sketches I made for blocks and layouts, uh, user interface and block and, block and layouts workflow. Uh, my name is Johan Falk, I'm in Sweden, Scandinavia. Uh, so, here's a block, a customized block that has some content and some layout and stuff. Uh, we have one block here that has missing set settings, is, it says, and I'm going to show you in a bit how this can be handled by, by working with dynamic data. Uh, what's usually called context in, in these discussions, but I think dynamic data or dynamic configuration could make more sense. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'm, uh, if you click on a gear for one of the blocks, it opens up and you get to see the uh, configuration for it. If, if you don't see the configuration, you get some kind of preview when possible, like in, in this case, but if you click it, you get the configuration. Uh, you can see that this block has two pieces of configuration. Uh, one is, well, it's a view showing related content. It has two configuration. One is the node it should show related content for. And one is the number of rows to display. Each piece of configuration, all of them, uh, you can switch between having uh, dynamic input, dynamic configuration fetched from the context of, of the block or you can use manual input uh, if you want to set something by hand. So in this case, we're uh, working with a block that has some node context. It's being used on a node page. Uh, and in this case, it uses that dynamic part, uh, well, dynamic input and fetches related content for, for that node being viewed right now, being sent into this block. We could switch to manual by clicking here and enter, say, 3 or 15 or something and that that will be interpreted as the node ID and then related content for that node will be displayed instead. Same thing down here we have a number of rows uh, we set that manually right now to 10 but we could switch to dynamic and if we have any number being available as a context then we can fetch that uh, uh, and have that this part of configuration being dynamic as well. All right. You hit save and you're done. This of course raises the question, what about this dynamic data, this uh, context that we have? Well, if you check this box over here, you get a huge number of, well, a lot of new information on, on the page. Let's see. Two things happen. You get a lot of data on the left, left side showing which um, contexts you have, what, what dynamic data you have. And the layout, all the blocks here, and switch and show configuration, uh, their configuration instead of previews. And I'm using a, a lot of different, well, a few different icons here. One, uh, well, each data type is being represented by one uh, icon, and I think that makes sense in some, some ways. And, well, let's see here. Let, let's start on the left side. We have some dynamic data available. We have some global data always available, like the acting user. I guess you have some other uh, information as well, like the, the active language perhaps, or the, the time of the day, or what page is being requested, or, or, or something. These are the global data always available. Then, in our case, we also have some provided data. Um, uh, when calling this block for, from a page, for example, you need to send in a node. When that's being done from, let's scroll back here a bit, like here, uh, when it's being called on this path, uh, you, uh, Drupal fetches uh, a dynamic part of the path and it's set up to interpret that as a node ID and from that it fetches a node. This is being sent into, where am I, into this provided data when this block is being called. But this block could be embedded on other pages as well or uh, even in blocks and then you need to send in a node as provided data to this block. Yeah, you get it, hopefully. It's kind of a, a, an argument or, or something, a parameter. And you can click on settings to change the name of this one. You might want to call it article instead or something. You can add new provided data and if you do that uh, it, you'll probably break how this block works when it's embedded on other places because uh, these places won't send in the proper data anymore. But yeah, then you have to fix that in other pages. Also, and this is kind of interesting, we have derived data, 
data that is not provided as input to this block, but derived from, from the context we have. Uh, well, from, yeah, from the context, the parameters brought into the block. We have something called author that I can tell you is derived from this node. If you open these settings, that will show pretty clearly. Uh, it, it fetches the, the author of, of a node and brings out a user object. This is icon for a user object. And we also have something called dynamic text. I don't know if this is a perfect way of doing it, but that's how I did it right now. It, uh, in this case, it fetches a node title and uh, adds some text forward and after. Like it's creating a, a title saying stuff related to node title or something like that. And that's being used in the title block up here. You can add more if you want to. You can remove the ones you have and things like that. Now, whew, uh, over here we have a block for user presentation. It doesn't care at all what user it's being, well, it should um, uh, present information about, but it is presenting uh, information about the node author because I, I guess you click this icon and drag it over here, and then this block knows that, oh, as this configuration, I well, this configuration is dynamic, I should read input from. Uh, this object over here. You could also, if you edit this block, switch to manual input and have that, well, yeah, have it uh, being user number five or whatever you choose manually. The grayed out icons have manual input like we have now. Uh, the green icons have dynamic input from the node in this case. Node uh, for related content and node for node content, a teaser here. Uh, finally, at the top we have this title that is also being fetched, uh, well, is using a dynamic configuration. Instead of having a static title written by hand, you have dynamic title fetched from this derived data over here. I hope this kind of makes sense. Let's see the last image. Uh, uh, to, to make it possible to have some overviews, I guess if you point on one of these icons, the uh, related uh, other icons highlight. So you can see that this block here is using the same, well, is using the data over here as input. That's the source of this configuration. And that's also the same source as this one over here. I think the click and drag thing to connect these makes sense, but you could probably also use a drop down here or something to, to work with it. Uh, let's see what else I've written down here. Uh, yeah, you want to be able to break these uh, connections as well. And I guess clicking on these icons, it breaks the connection or something. And then you switch over to manual input as usual. Well, the fallback with manual input. And yeah, that's it. Um, this is inspired by partly the Yahoo Pipes that has this nice uh, connection thing from from a provider to a consumer block. Uh, also by rules, inspired by rules, that has this nice switch between uh, manual input and dynamic input that is, uh, I think, really sweet to have. Right, yeah. Um, hope that makes sense. See you around. Uh, feel free to join the discussion here over at groups, Drupal org slash node slash 227543. And that's it. See you around. Bye.